We're getting close to a thousand people who have used this direct one-on-one -on -one consultation service. We're gonna keep it in place as long as it's helpful. There's also an excellent website that gets richer uh, every day from the Resource and Recovery Center. And um, I, you know, if it's unemployment insurance or if it's almost any other challenge that you're facing in this crisis, go check it out. Uh, we'll have a full report from the Resource and Recovery Center um, on Monday, I think is the plan. Let's, uh, let's keep going, Olivia. So the uh, next update we wanted to share today is about the BTV Community Mask Initiative. This has really um, been just one of the most heartwarming uh, <clears throat> community efforts um, to happen since this pandemic began. Uh, we've seen so many heroic examples of people stepping up and helping their neighbors and uh, helping strangers uh, during this crisis. This mask effort has really been a sustained effort now um, that ha started in March. And at the beginning of April, we set the goal of essentially pro uh, providing every essential worker in Burlington and every Burlingtonian who needed a mask, um, we wanted to give them one uh, before May 15th, which was the date that the governor announced some time ago um, would be the end of the, or what was a milestone, at least in the stay home, um, stay home order. So we knew that right around May 15th, people would be coming out of their homes more frequently, and we wanted them to have a high quality mask from the city if they needed it for free. I'm excited to announce that earlier today, uh, down on Main Street, um, I was there with some other members of the city team that you could you can see pictured there in the photo and we handed over to the Burlington Housing Authority um, hundreds of masks that included within them the 20,000th community mask that has been uh, made by this community effort since this, since this initiative began. So again, this is an initiative where the city went out and bought back in March a truckload of uh, high quality um, durable denim material. And then our chief innovation officer, Brian Lowe, who's gonna take it away from here in a moment, um, uh, worked very carefully with a number of other organizations to finalize a design that would um, have high quality specifications. Essentially, the, the goal was to try to create sort of surgical quality masks that could be reused again and again, washed again and again. And uh, the it's been exciting to see the mask design evolve through uh, several prototypes to this very uh, convenient uh, elastic band, usable one we have today. And, um, and then we have partnered with hundreds of volunteers in the community who have helped fabricate these masks, who have sewn them, all these materials together. There's also been organizations involved and it's, it's just really been uh, an outstanding community effort. Brian, um, bring us up to speed on, uh, you know, where it stands from your perspective and, and the opportunities that are left that people still have not yet um, gotten a mask. Absolutely, Mayor. So it, it really has been an incredible community effort. I think um, the, the, the sewers at Lyric Theater, the folks at Vermont Teddy Bear, um, hundreds of people across our community and others across Chittenden County um, have contributed to this effort. Um, and we are, we are still passing them out. So um, today at Market 32, um, there'll be another distribution, and at Butcher Free Library, um, when they do their curbside pickup, there'll be uh, an opportunity to pick up masks as well, um, Sunday from 12 to 4. Uh, next week and ongoing, we plan to have kind of distribution points that are set and staffed at regular times, but we probably won't be doing these grocery store style distributions um, anymore. So if you're a resident and you want a mask, um, we will have them at Butcher Free and at the Burlington Police Department. Um, we'll put these times up on the website, but Fletcher Free will be on Wednesday uh, and Saturday, and the Burlington Police Department will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, you're also, of course, welcome to contact the Resource and Recovery Center if you, um, if you would like a mask. And um, it's, it's really exciting to see how this um, came together, and uh, thank you, Mayor. Well, Brian, I know, um, I know it made you and the rest of the team nervous when uh, back in the state of the city, um, I uh, committed us to... to getting tens of thousands of these masks built and, and distributed by, uh, by the end of the stay home order, but um, you did it. 
congratulations. Thank you for, for your hard work and, and thank you um, to the, again, the hundreds of people that have been involved in, in making this, this possible. Let's, uh, so um, we're not gonna let Brian off easy though. Uh, we, uh, we, we have um, this, uh, this, this, this community initiative has had such an impact and it's been, um, uh, it, it's really, I think, revealed um, the potential for uh, volunteerism and community collaboration as a meaningful um, intervention, a meaningful strategy for getting through this unprecedented crisis. And so we are announcing today the start of another initiative that we are calling Plant for the People. And uh, there is the logo. And you're gonna see a lot of that logo over the coming months. This is uh, an effort that we hope ultimately hundreds if not thousands of Brontonians get involved with to help address the very significant food insecurity issues that are, are coming to the fore here in, in this crisis. We have seen the estimates that something like one third of Vermonters are worried about food security right now, struggling to get a consistent supply of food. And it's not clear that this is gonna get better anytime soon. We don't know how long we are gonna be in this situation where thousands of Vermonters are out of work. Um, we have seen some of our food supply chains disrupted, particularly in the meat uh, industry by the virus. And, um, this is a time where local gardening, the local food system, which has been such a strength for um, Burlingtonian for so so long, um, where it needs to uh, it needs to shine, and where it um, can be a meaningful uh, part of the answer to this food insecurity question. So basically, we are encouraging all Burlingtonians to consider um, donating surplus fruits and vegetables from your gardens, or even to plant additional uh, gardens, expand your gardening effort this summer so that you can make later in the summer this um, contribution to this communal, this collective effort. And our goal is to secure 100,000 pounds of additional produce to contribute to uh, feeding chitin, chitin to address the, the, the large and, and growing need that we are facing there. And um, I see that we are, are joined by Hannah Harrington from Feeding Chitin. And uh, Brian, I, I'm not sure, do you want to take it first and share a few more details about this effort? Sure, I'll speak to it a little bit and then turn it over to, to Hannah. Um, so you know, this is a, it's a, it's a new effort for us, but it builds, I think, on some of the strengths of our community, as the mayor was, was talking about um, just a moment ago. The first element of it is we're asking people to expand their fruit or vegetable um, gardens so that we can, as a city, collect um, the surplus produce from those gardens and bring it to the food shelf. And we're working closely with Hannah and the folks at the food shelf to make sure that we bring it to the food shelf in a way that is um, useful to them, right? I mean, it needs to be cleaned and brought in a certain way um, so that it doesn't create a burden um, on them as they're trying to handle a pretty substantial increase in demand. So to do this, um, we'll talk a little bit more about how we're gonna collect the surplus uh, in a moment. The other um, part of this initiative is that we're partnering with um, Red Wagon Plants, which is a farm enterprise in Hinesburg that both grows and sells produce. Um, we'll be distributing locally grown starts and seedlings from Red Wagon for free um, to Burlingtonians who want them at select distribution sites, which will, um, which will be Ace Bibbins um, or Bibbins Ace Hardware in the New North End um, and 405 Pine Street in the South End um, on Friday next week from four to six. Um, we'll also be distributing these seedlings and starts through the Burlington Housing Authority and a number of different um, halal and markets um, along North Street there in the Old North End um, uh, next week. And the goal here is, you know, this is our first distribution of seedlings. We expect to have at least a second in early June. Um, you know, we're, we're subject to, to planting season here. So a lot of the fruits and veggies that we want to do now um, are need to be kind of hardy plants. Um, and then we'll look at a, a, a second round in early June, which would have tomatoes and peppers and, and the like. Um, and the goal is to get these out to Burlingtonians as they're considering expanding their gardens um, and also selecting plants that uh, reflect the cultural needs in our community 
and the realities. There are some people who don't have a big backyard but might wanna contribute here and might wanna, um, for instance, get from us a, a trellis plant that allows you to grow tomatoes indoors. Um, so there's a lot on that, that piece there. So a big collection effort where we really need um, our, our, um, our gardeners to expand their backyard gardens or share the surplus with us or start a victory garden, the main line of effort. And then this kind of second piece where we wanna make sure we get starts and seedlings out into our community. Um, we'll collect those later in the season um, and bring them to the food shelf. Uh, sorry, Olivia, you might keep, there you go. Um, so we also wanna leverage, just like we did with the mask effort, um, we'd like to leverage the, the latent skill in our community. Um, we have a ton of very experienced, very capable gardeners um, in this community. We'd like to um, connect those who know um, how to garden with those who are trying to start. Um, and we can do that through our resource and recovery center. Um, and so we will have uh, information information is actually now up on our website explaining um, the program and by Monday we'll have um, a form where you can register um, to uh, let us know that you want us to be thinking about you when we pick up produce to offer to volunteer in terms of either collecting with us some of that produce or to volunteer some of your skill uh, to help somebody else starting a garden in the community. Um, I think maybe one more thing on the next slide and then I'll turn it over to, uh, to Hannah and the mayor. Um, sorry, do you mind going one more? Yeah. Brian, the next slide. Um, is the next. Okay. Yeah. Then, then why don't I do this? I'll turn I'll turn it over to Hannah. Um, speak a little bit about this from a food shelf perspective. Um, I think there are a couple of kind of critical points for folks to understand in the community about how this impacts the food shelf. Thank you. Thank you all for having me today. Um, this is such an exciting initiative for us because we um, our mission is to provide food uh, for those who need it. And a big part of that is making sure this food is quality, that this food is nutritious, and that we're not just meeting a caloric need, but we're also providing those in need with, with a balanced diet. Um, and I think right now of all times in the middle of this health crisis, that's, that's such a huge priority. So there is a real need for local fresh produce um, grown by Burlingtonians uh, at the food shelf. We want to increase our distribution of fruits and vegetables in the coming months. And to meet that goal, uh, we, when we have an increased need, we're gonna need more support from the community. A, a range of fruits and vegetables is, is uh, will be great in the coming months uh, so that we can address different dietary needs and preferences and also those different um, cultural sensitivities. So when uh, planning your garden or thinking about what to plant, we recommend that folks think about what they like to eat, what they like to grow and what they like to have in their garden and, and that they consider donating some of that to the food shelf and that those preferences uh, will likely match and be expanded out in the community. So we are hoping that through this initiative, we'll get some really um, an increase in quantity, but also some really high quality produce uh, because there is such um, great knowledge of gardening and such an, a, a, an excitement of it in the city. And we, we're thankful for the value that this initiative will have in this crisis, but also for the long-term value that, um, that this will have for our community. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Hannah. And I think, Mayor, before I turn it over to you, just one, one last thing. Um, you know, that 100,000 pounds of food is definitely an ambitious goal. It's one we think we're gonna strive hard to meet. Um, and I think Hannah's point there about the long-term value of this initiative is really important. Um, we want to, as a city, be oriented towards supporting the food shelf in crisis and beyond. Um, and this is a, a kind of way we can take advantage of the crisis to strengthen our local food system. Um, we also, um, you may be seeing some signs around the city. Um, if you wanna participate in this, we're gonna have these kind of popsicle stick signs that note the kind of plant for the people logo and have our tagline, which is a pepper in every pot underneath them uh, for those who wanna participate um, and kind of build that kind of community spirit around this. Cause I think it could be a fun initiative to partake in as well. So thank you, Mayor. Great. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Hannah. Thanks for coming on today. And, um, you know, this is this is an effort that's going to last throughout the season. So I'm sure we'll be talking many more times, uh, giving updates on, on how this is going. Um, I do hope, uh, yeah, Hannah, that this will uh, really impact um, the services that you're able to uh, provide and, and this really healthy, wholesome way. way. Um, so 
Um, more to come. Thank you both for, for your leadership and, and helping getting this new exciting program set up. So um, next we want to talk a little bit further uh, about where just there's a, a, a quick update about the park reopening. Um, last weekend, we had the dog parks and the tennis courts, pickleball courts reopened after, you know, long, long closure. Um, this weekend, the basketball courts are all uh, back up. And I want to thank uh, the Parks, Recreation, and Waterfront team for working hard to, to make that happen quickly. Um, once we made this decision this week that it was time to reopen those facilities as well. You know, the, re the only reason we hesitated on these is because the governor's guidance um, uh, is that um, it is still too early for kind of full contact play to uh, re return. So if people want to use these basketball courts, the expectation is that um, you can shoot hoops um, and, you, you know, you can play a game of horse. Uh, there is um, not supposed to be, however, um, contact play. So we will have attendance out monitoring, um, trying to make sure people are educated about that. And we do ask for the cooperation of, of the Burlington public in uh, making it safe for these facilities to be reopened. Um, second point we wanted to make, you know, we know the governor had uh, further announcements about the reopening of businesses um, here in Vermont at his press conference earlier today. Um, there has been a swiftly moving set of new guidance that has come out in, in recent weeks. And um, I, I think we may be getting through a period where there's some period of stabilization, but I know there are all sorts of questions and clarifications. I'm sure there will continue to be refinements of the, the guidance for, for some time. And if you are working for, if you have a local business that is trying to navigate this period of a remarkable um, flux and to, wants to open your business, but wants to make sure you're doing it with the latest best practices and following the latest guidance and you have any confusion about that, this is another thing we can help you with at the RRC. There again, is the contact information for the RRC. Again, you can either look at the considerable amount of guidance that we have published there already. Uh, uh, you can also just get directly in touch and have some kind of one-on-one -on -one consultation. Uh, frequently, we get questions that we don't immediately know the answers to, but we have a very good channel set up with the Agency of Commerce and Community Development to get clarifying questions addressed quickly. So uh, if you are in any way uh, struggling with this, we really encourage you to be in touch. Um, we will be talking more uh, about, you know, the, you know, again, uh, we started today talking about the terrible jobless numbers that the federal government released earlier today. We know that this is the, the hardest time that most small businesses have ever faced in their history and that they, many, many of them are kind of hanging on by the fingernails for survival through, through, this, uh, through this economic storm. Um, we have been working, in fact, right uh, in, a, in a few minutes, we again have a meeting of our, our small business task force. Um, we are working closely with local small businesses to try to do anything we can to support them directly here in Burlington through this, and we will have an update on that um, on the briefing on Monday. More food security efforts. Uh, the South End um, city councilors with many others have organized what is being called the South End Community Food Pickup for tomorrow, Saturday, May 16th, in the Champlain Elementary School parking lot from 9 to 11 a.m. You can see the information there on the screen. And you can also see that we have been joined by Ward 6 City Councilor um, Karen Paul, who has really been spearheading this initiative and is here to share some additional detail about it. Welcome, Karen. There you go. Oh. I think I can, can you hear me now? We can, okay. go ahead. 
Great, thank you. Uh, thanks, Mayor, and thanks so much for um, for inviting me onto this briefing. I appreciate it. It's a another opportunity to get the word out about um, this event. Um, you know, I've been involved in my years as a city councilor. I've been involved in a lot of different initiatives, and I have to say, this one has perhaps been the most meaningful. Um, there's uh, the event is you know as you as you say is as you said is um, tomorrow from nine to eleven. Uh, the school department has been very gracious in letting us use their parking lot, um, and you know it is building off uh, the success of um, the uh, the new North End pantry food pantry. Um, uh, Tom Flurry, who I've known since our years at Burlington High School has been spearheading that for years and has been tremendously successful in connecting uh, people, particularly in the new North End, who are suffering from food insecurity. Um, and you're so right, Mayor, the number of people that are now affected by this is just tremendous. And um, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to do whatever we can uh, to help um, to help those that are really in need. Uh, I did want to, just give a shout out to a couple of people and I'll try not to make the list too long, but there's been such an amazing outpouring of community support for this event that I, I, I have, to, have to acknowledge the hard work of a number of people. Um, first of all, I just wanted to um, note that I am co-hosting the event with uh, the two other South End City Councilors, uh, Joan Shannon and Chip Mason. Um, also wanted to mention that in addition to flooding social media and Front Porch Forum and resharing posts, I think almost a hundred times to promote this event, um, I did reach out to other city councilors and just wanted to acknowledge the um, enthusiastic support that other city councilors have given to this event, um, particularly councilors Han Hansen, Hightower, Stromberg, Pine, Carpenter, and Polino. Um, and then uh, the other the other thing I just have to share with um, share with everyone is the enormous amount of support that we have gotten from City Market. Um, City Market has truly par partnered with us on, at this for this event. Um, they are uh, they're just an enormous uh, a partner when it comes to addressing issues of food insecurity. Um, Allison, uh, I'm sorry, not Allison, um, uh, Caroline Aubrey, who is the uh, membership director of City Markets Food for All program is going to be um, with us at the food pickup. Um, that is a program that offers a, it's a discount program for all eligible Vermonters who receive uh, three squares, WIC, SSI, and SSDI. It offers um, shoppers a 15% discount on produce and bulk a 10% discount on all shopping store-wide for the whole year. And she will be out there to help get the word out. Um, and then just two other acknowledgements, as you can see the event will not only have food and grocery gift cards, um, there will be 200 BTV community masks. Um, Brian, Brian has been amazing. Brian and his team have been amazing. Um, and then free books available from the Fletcher Free Library, uh, Library. Emer uh, Feeney is going to be with us. Um, and uh, also, we are grateful that Breeding Chittenden um, is going to be taking food donations. So anyone who brings non-perishables down to Champlain Elementary School, they will be going to Feeding Chittenden to help the greater uh, Burlington and, um, and county effort. So sorry, that was a mouthful, but just had to get that out. Uh -huh. Thank you. That was great, Karen. What a what a great combination of services opportunities um, you're pulling together here. So um, thank you for your your leadership on this. Um, I, I appreciate that you did note the, uh, the New North End Food Pantry, which has been a great effort as well. I was uh, texting um, with leaders from that effort earlier this afternoon. I think we'll have them on sometime next week. Uh, we haven't really had them uh, speak directly on this briefing before and what they've been doing there has been awesome as well. So um, look forward to hearing how it goes tomorrow, uh, Karen, and thank you again for, for doing this. Uh, you're very welcome. Well, we do, you know, just in closing, we do hope that anyone, um, anyone who is in need um, will come if, 
if for any reason someone is unable to make it and they have uh, a neighbor or a friend who is able to come in their place, that's fine too. Um, we also do have a couple of people who have offered to deliver them to a doorstep if someone is unable to get to us and uh, just doesn't have someone who can help them out with that. We're here to do that as well. So um, thank you. And thanks again for allowing me this time. Absolutely. Of course. Um, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for, for yes. being back with us. Thank you. The final um, update of the week is the fun at home resource of the day for Friday. And this is a great one. DCA has this whole segment on building fairy houses. Uh, and you can see a couple of the examples there. This is um, if you uh, have raised a, a daughter in the last 15 years, um, you may know, may, maybe sons as well. I just haven't had that direct experience. These uh, fairy houses have, uh, um, this is an important, this is an essentially an essential skill now in 20, 20th, 21st century childhood. And uh, this is a, um, a good guide for how you can make really outstanding fairy houses. I have not seen the video yet myself, but the, the team at BCA has been turning out great content, content throughout this this pandemic and um, this is part of the finale of the kids week of activities um, you can go there to the website for some of the others which are still posted for scavenger hunts and um, uh, other art arts activities baking ideas so check it out um, i think that's what we have for today right olivia that's right all right are there any questions? Anyone, any, any media questions? We do have some. Um, our first question is from Aiden Quigley at VT Digger. Um, and Aiden, I see you here on Zoom, so I'm going to try to um, enable your microphone and you can ask your question directly. And reminder for other members of the media who are tuning in, um, you can let me know that you have a question by sending me an email at olivia at burlingtonvt.gov. And then you can either write your question in your email and I can ask it, or if you're joining via Zoom, I can enable your microphone and you can ask the question directly. So Aiden, I am going to try to make this work. Aiden, you should be able to unmute your microphone now. Great, I think I, I, think I did. Um, my uh, question today is about masking. Um, the governor's most recent executive order uh, since the municipalities can enact stricter uh, masking requirements locally than the state is doing. And I'm wondering if that's something that Burlington is uh, considering doing. Yeah, Aiden, I'm so glad you asked that question because I meant to say that. Yes, we, um, we had been in touch with the governor's team through this week, um, raising uh, our hope that the, that the municipalities would be given the authority to go further then the um, voluntary uh, guidance that the governor has had in place prior to now. Um, you know that here in Burlington, we have from the early days of this epidemic been uh, very focused on masking, face covering as a critical strategy. I think that strategy is more important than ever as we move into the kind of box it in stage uh, when we are living, we're trying to resume our lives um, and have as much of our community and economy turn back on and be suppressing the, the virus, boxing in the virus. So we all can kind of get out of this box and, and get back to some semblance of normalcy. And uh, masks are definitely a part of that. Masks indoors in confined spaces in particular, um, all of the science that we've seen indicates that this is an important strategy for um, reducing the transmission uh, of the virus. So we did want the ability to go further than this voluntary guidance. The, uh, the, as you said, the governor has now said municipalities can elect to do that. It takes an action from the, the legislative body. Um, and that action I expect will happen on Monday. Uh, Councilor Joan Shannon, um, has already been circulating a resolution. I believe that it's posted already um, in the, yesterday. And I, 
I would expect, I don't know if Councilor Paul, you have another perspective on it. I'm, I'm hopeful this will have strong support on Monday and this will be a requirement if you want to go into a Burlington shop that you'll have to cover your face. I think, I think, um, I think Mayor, the, uh, the resolution already has um, five or six co-sponsors, including myself, Councilor Shannon and four others. Um, so yes, I do believe, and it's a well-written resolution with help from the city attorney. Um, we're hoping to get support for that on Monday night. Great. Thank you. I'm glad you have that real time uh, update, Councilor Paul. And, and I, just, I just really want to make the point here that um, I think in the early days of this pandemic, we thought of the public health measures as somehow being in tension with the economic measures because we were taking steps that, um, you know, that seemed to have a negative uh, impact on the economy in order, you know, and I, I think I used the formulation at times that, you know, we had to save lives first and then we'll figure out the rest and we'll figure out the, the econ economic impacts later. I think what there's a growing understanding of, and this is a great example, is to get our economy back, to get the confidence um, that we can operate these uh, uh, businesses and nonprofits, offices, all these uh, elements of our society safely, um, we, need the, we need to succeed at these public health strategies. And so the success in suppressing the violent virus is very much uh, intertwined with um, our ability to rebuild our economy. And um, uh, so I, I hope everyone in seeing um, the city take this step understands this to be um, a, a, an effort to um, support the economy, support getting people back to work, getting uh, doing something about this terrible growing food insecurity we've been talking about. This is, this by all indications, masking has a enormous impact on the transmission of the virus. And I think it's going to be an important strategy until that date, months or, you know, longer from now when we have widespread effective therapies and when we have, or when we have a, a vaccine. So um, I'm really glad the, the council is, it shares this sense of, uh, uh, of how we can impact this and it's going to be taking this action. And it looks like that is our only question from uh, a member of the media today. All right, very good. We'll close it out there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again, Karen, for, for joining us on the briefing. Thank you and everyone else, Brian and Hannah, for being on earlier. Uh, good. You know, as we close another another week here, I, I hope you you share my my sense of, of optimism that, um, you know, as we talked about in the early part of the week and as we had at the town hall meeting, we we are we are at the end of the beginning. We are leaving the stay home period of this crisis. We are moving into the box it in stage. It is, um, it, is, it is a time where we still have uncertainty and we still have risk and we have challenges unlike anything we've seen before. But uh, as we head into a weekend, I hope you take a sense of optimism and confidence that we are gonna get through this together. We've shown that we can do it. Vermont is coming out of this faster than, than any other state, just about maybe the fastest and uh, we're gonna we're gonna succeed at this next stage as well um, by continuing to work together and by continuing to have great initiatives like these that, that you guys have come on today to, to share. So have a great weekend, everyone. We'll be back again with a briefing on Monday at two. Uh, we'll talk about some of the Matt, other items in front of the city council on Monday, and, and we'll kick off uh, another big week in this uh, in this recovery effort. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>